Hello, everybody. Thank you for the kind invitation. I'm Ellen van Eetvelde, and I work in Belgium at the University Hospital in Brussels. My disclosures are that I am a proctor for Intuitive Surgical. Today, I would like to talk to you about robotic right hemicolectomy using the critical view concept and the standard of care approach. Standard of care for right colon cancer is still the right hemicolectomy being performed through open surgery or through laparoscopy, where we know that laparoscopy has some certain advantages in the postoperative phase when compared to open surgery. However, there are some challenges in performing laparoscopic surgery, for instance, in obese patients or patients with major abdominal surgery in their history, minimal invasive surgery with laparoscopy can be very difficult. And this is where the robotic approach might have its benefit. Also, if we look at extended resections or CME surgery, what are the principles of CME surgery? Well, it is comparable to TME surgery in rectal resections. We perform sharp dissection in embryological planes without the disrupture of the mesocolic fascia. We also harvest as, ma as many lymph nodes as possible by clearing the D3 lymph nodes around the superior mesenteric vessels and performing high ligations of contributing vessels. The operative field should look like we see on the left-hand side of the picture after the central lymph node dissection and a typical resection specimen after CME surgery we can see on the right-hand side. This technique was first described by Hohenberger and his team in 2009, and they saw that with implementation of CME surgery, they saw that the patients had a better overall survival and a lower local recurrence rate. Since then, other teams have shown similar results and evidence is slowly but surely building up that maybe CME surgery might become the standard of care for right colon cancer. So how do you do that? How do we implement robotic CME surgery? Well, you divide it into steps. First, you don't change anything, you only change the, the device. You start exploring robotic surgery with the technique you are used to as you were in laparoscopic surgery. You then switch to the intracorporeal anastomosis. You start playing with variations in port placement and the sub ileal approach. And then you start the central lymph node dissection and high ligation of contributing vessels. Using the critical view concept. This was a paper uh, written by Stefan Benz and a big German team where they identified eight critical views during CME surgery. It is based on the principle of a book with different pages in that book. We have a retroperitoneal page, an iliocolic page, a transverse mesocolic page, and a mesogastric page. And all the different pages should be identified and separated one from another. The first dissection is the subilial dissection, where we separate the iliocolic page from the retroperitoneal page, and we dissect over the duodenum and the pancreatic head. Second step is the V view, where we identify the iliocolic vessels and the superior mesenteric vein, and we start dissection in the avascular space between both structures. We then turn our attention to the basis of the iliocolic vessels, where we identify first the iliocolic vein, and then we identify the iliocolic artery. We then move towards the mesogastric and the mesocolic pages, where we open the lesser sac by entering the gastrocolic ligament from the left-hand side, and thus opening the space be behind the stomach. We then further separate the mesocolic and the mesogastric page until we get the so-called sulcus view. We then turn our attention to the mesogast excuse me, to the meso mesocolic page, where we need to identify the middle colic vessels and separately isolate and transect the right branch of the middle colic artery. And as a last step of CME surgery, we need to perform dissection around Henley's trunk and selectively transect the colic branch or branches. Now, how does this look in practice? This is a typical OR setup. 
if you have an X system, you need to dock the robot over the right shoulder of the patient. If you have an XI system, you can dock from anywhere you want and target towards the hepatic flexure. The scrub nurse and the assistant are positioned on the left-hand side of the patient. This is a typical patient positioning where we have a slight Trendelenburg and the left tilt. The left tilt is very important to have a good bowel positioning and exposure of the operative field. Port placement, it's from the suprapubic area to the left hypochondrium with a target on the hepatic flexure. You need uh, keep in mind that we keep our distance from the target zone and we place the camera in port number two and the stapler through car in port number three. First thing we change in our habitual technique is switch to intracorporeal anastomosis. After transection of both bowel segments, we perform an enterotomy on the transverse colon and on the terminal ilium at the anti-mesenteric side. We then introduce the stapler in port number three. We open the jaws and we lift up the tips towards the anterior side of the abdomen. We can then use our both hands to gently slide both bowel segments over the opened jaws. We can then close them, verify before stapling, and then staple. We like to place a swab underneath the stapler to prevent some leakage of stool and to clean the stapler before removal out of the trocar. We then lift up the remnant enterotomy for subsequent closure. We like to perform a suture from bottom to up because it is in our experience that the bottom stitches are the most difficult to place when you leave them for the last bit. So we prefer to start at the bottom and work our way up. When using the robotic platform, suturing in this way does not pose any problems. We like to perform a running suture using Vicro 3.0, but of course, a barbed wire such as VLOC is very good uh, to use as an alternative. We perform a single layer, but of course, double layer is fine as well. Second thing you might want to switch is switch to the subilial approach according to the critical view concept where you open up the peritoneum at the subilial region and we separate both planes. We perform dissection over the duodenum and over the pancreatic head. And in slim patients, you can even mobilize the hepatic flexure coming from below, as you see here in this video. We then go towards the iliocolic vessels in the V view and we dissect towards the superior mesenteric vein, performing a lymphadenectomy, taking all those lymph nodes with us, and then identify the iliocolic vein and iliocolic artery. Keep in mind that in right colon surgery, the vascular anatomy is highly variable, and it is a good uh, practice to always perform a study of the preoperative CT scan before embarking on CME surgery. Okay, next step for variation is variations in port placement. Once you are used to the di diagonal approach, you can switch to the suprapubic port placement as you see here. Um, we keep the camera port in port number two and the stapler through car in port number three. If the patients are very slim, the most lateral ports can be placed a couple of centimeters more to the, uh, to the head of the patient. Then you get a sort of a smiley configuration. Why do we do the suprapubic port placement? Because of this view. It's like a motorway where the superior mesenteric vein is the main road and all of the contributing uh, branches that need to be identified and clipped or left alone are as uh, an exit on this motorway. So last part in uh, teaching CME surgery is the central dissection. So here we just saw the transaction of the right colic artery. This is a highly variable uh, artery, which is more not present than present. 
And in this case, there was uh, a right colic artery. And then after clipping of the iliocolic vessels that was done beforehand, we follow the motorway in a cephalate direction until we encounter the middle colic vessels. It is very important to clear away all of those lymph nodes and not to transact any structure before correct identification. So for the middle colic vessels, you need to know which is the left branch, which is the right branch, and then you can selectively clip the right branch. As a last part of the central dissection, we will dissect Henle's confluence this is another highly variable anatomical structure, which is always different in formation and it is very important to identify the different branches and only to clip the colic branch or branches. So in summary, when implementing robotic right hemicolectomy and maybe in the near future CME surgery as a future standard of care, start with your familiar technique change only one thing at a time, know your vascular anatomy while using the critical view concept. So thank you for your kind attention. Bye.